and a very pleasant good afternoon to you, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello, hi. It's 2.59 p.m. my time here. A little later than I usually like to do videos, but hey, as the Lord wills, His will be done. In this video today, we are going to be answering a question. A very, very seemingly simple question that <laughs> uh, kind of went one way, then the Lord that's taken it into another way. Um, you know, brother, you ask me these beautiful questions that you do. You, you know who you are. Um, the question I was asked was, what do you think of birthdays? Should we celebrate them? What about when your family wants to give you gifts? Good question. So today, uh, like I said, we are going to be answering question asked of me uh, about birthdays. But then we're going to kind of switch a little and then focus on the giving of gifts, okay? So this uh, video is going to be done in two parts. I'm going to answer a uh, look into the scriptures about birthdays and also about the giving of gifts, okay? And that, uh, brother, so you know, the giving thing, the giving of gifts, that, that's, that's the one that kind of, eh. so anyway, with that said, Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along in your authorized version of the scriptures, okay? Now, the Jehovah's cult, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they, are, they do not celebrate birthdays. But does the scriptures have anything about birthdays? Yes, it does. The word birthday appears three times in the scriptures, okay? And we're going to look at these. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Genesis chapter 40. Genesis chapter 40. Now, Genesis chapter 40 is when um, Joseph was in prison and Pharaoh had the two guys, the butler and the baker, and he put them in prison. And they both of them had dreams. And Joseph, uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, God our Father, he gave them the interpretation of the dreams to give unto these men. Okay? So, we are going to read verses 20 on to verse 23. Okay? In Genesis chapter 40. Please follow me along. You are expected to. And I'm going to address you as though you are. Okay? Got it? All right. Genesis chapter 40, verses 20, unto the close of the chapter. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forget him. So, verse 20. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, Pharaoh's birthday that he made a feast unto all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. Pharaoh's birthday, first occurrence. Now go into the New Testament, the gospel accounts, doctrinally the gospel accounts until the death, burial, and resurrection are doctrinally, dispensationally under the law. Do not forget that. Matthew chapter 14. Now, what we're going to be looking at in Matthew chapter 14 is the same account in Mark chapter 6, which we will also look at. It's the same account. And what it is, what is it, the account of it? 
Matthew chapter 14. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Matthew chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 6. At that time Herod, the Tetrarch, heard of the fame of Jesus, Herod, and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. And therefore mighty works do shew forth themselves in him. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him, and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. And John said unto him, It is not lawful for for John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude, because they because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. So Herod's birthday. Okay? Second appearance of the word birthday. And let's look in Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6, okay, oh, verses 14 on to verse 22, okay, Mark chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 22, and King Herod heard of him, Jesus, for his name was spread abroad. And he said that John the Baptist was risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do shew forth themselves in him. Others said that it is Elias, and others said that it is a prophet, or as one of the prophets. But when Herod heard thereof, he said, It is John, whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. Think Herod had a little guilt? <laughs> For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John, and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married, married her. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him, and would have killed him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man and unholy, and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things, and heard him gladly. And when a convenient day was come, that Herod on his birthday, now check this out, made a supper to his lords, high captains and chief estates of Galilee. And when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced and pleased Herod and them that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it thee. So that is the third occurrence of the word birthday in the entirety of scripture. Okay? So now, what do we see here? And we're going to be using Mark here as a reference point rather than the one in Matthew chapter 14, okay? But, what do we see here, okay? Now go back to Genesis chapter 40, okay? Genesis chapter 40. I'm using the Schofield for this one, just, just to change up sets of scriptures. My Cambridge is right here. Genesis chapter 40, verse 20. And it came to pass the third day, and it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. Mark chapter 6, verse 21. And when a convenient day was come, that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains, and chief estates of Galilee. So what do we see? Well, number one, that in context, where birthday, the word birthday appears, 
Who are the ones whose birthdays are being celebrated? Pharaoh and Herod. Okay? So we see what? Rulers. Pharaoh, an Egyptian, Herod. I don't really know if Herod was a Jew, but here's the thing, okay? Um, they were pagans, okay? They were pagans. Some would say that Herod uh, uh, was Judaic, but I don't really know. I don't really know. But nonetheless, um, Pharaoh and Herod truly did not believe on the true living God, okay? Number one. They were rulers and pagans, okay? Number two, Pharaoh here in Genesis chapter 40, verse 20, Pharaoh made a feast unto all his servants. And also looking in Mark chapter 21, uh, Mark chapter 6, verse 21, Herod made a supper to his lords, high captains, and chief estates of Galilee. So, and that's number two. So, in context, birthday is related unto what? Rulers, who are pagan. And two, the rulers, for their birthday, made suppers unto their lords. They did things for their, their servants and whatnot, okay? So those who had the birthday were doing the giving, okay? And, of course, we know that Herodias, Herodias came and danced in front of Herod and got everybody worked up. And she used that, her sensuality, uh, as a means to uh, get Herod to done cut off the head of John the Baptist, okay? And you all know the story, okay? If you do not, go ahead and read Mark chapter 6 on your own time or Matthew chapter 14 on your own time, okay? It would be well worth your reading, okay? But here's, what, here's what's important to note. Okay? Number one, they're pagan rulers. Number two, the rulers whose birthdays are mentioned did things for their servants. Okay? They made suppers unto their, uh, what does it say here? Um, uh, he made a feast unto his servants, Pharaoh did. And um, Herod made a supper unto his lords and captains he like gave unto them on their birthday. Okay? Number three, every occurrence of the word birthday. One is before the law. In Genesis chapter 40. This is before the law. Okay? A different dispensation. Because this the dispensation of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, ended with the Exodus. See, it was the Garden of Eden, then the, um, the dispensation of the patriarchs, which was similar to ours, not identical. Why? Because they were having faith in what God would do. Whereas today, you have faith on what God has done. See? But see, the first dispensation, the Garden of Eden, ended when uh, God done kicked them out of the garden. They disobeyed. It was works. Okay? Done kicked them out. The second dispensation, the time of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? That was a time of grace as well, but it was very different. Why? Because the perfect sacrifice for sins had yet to be made, okay? It was different. They were having faith on what he would do, whereas today we are having faith on the finished work of the cross. Very different. Similar. But yet very different, okay? And of course, the third dispensation, the law, okay? You with me so far? So, this mentioning of the birthday was during the time of the uh, patriarchs, okay? And the other mention of birthday was while the law was still binding before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? So, you could say that birthdays is number one, something done according to scripture for the rulers. Celebrating their birthdays for is something that the rulers, the higher up, upper echelon people were doing, okay? Number two, they were pagans. Number three, they did things for their servants. Number four, uh, 
One was under a total, they were both in different dispensations to begin with. Okay? So keep these things in mind. Done by rulers who were pagans. The rulers whose birthdays were being celebrated, they gave on to their subjects. Number three, one was uh, in the dispensation of the patriarchs. Okay? And the other one was under the dispensation of the law. Because in this dispensation today, the time of the Gentiles, and anywhere else, you do not see anything mentioned of birthday beyond that. And see, here, here's an interesting uh, aspect to keep in mind. The Christ Mass thing. And hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, we're, we're not going to go off on that, okay? I've made my peace on that. I've said my peace on that, made my peace with it. Um, you all know how I feel about the hell day known as Christ Mass, which shh, shh, we're not going to go there, okay? But some will bring it up, well, it's like we celebrate Jesus's birthday. Number one, uh, we don't know when God the Father was uh, born, you know, in the flesh, <laughs> when um, he was actually birthed, okay? We do not specifically know. You, as a person, spirit, soul, and body, uh, you, you know when you were born, okay? And, and those are, it's like, well, uh, if we can celebrate our birthdays, why can't we celebrate God's birthday? Comparing yourself to God? Really? Interesting. Interesting. But now let's go to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14, let's read verses 5 on to verse 13 in Romans chapter 14. Now, you have to remember the entirety of Romans chapter 14, okay? Number one, it's written for us today in this dispensation, to the Jew first and also to us Greeks. Greeks are Gentiles, okay? That's what I mean by that, okay? A Greek is a Gentile. Someone who is not a Jew. Someone who is not of uh, Shem. Okay? <laughs> so, we are Gentiles. Okay? But, you have to remember that the main um, context is for meat. The dietary restriction kind of thing. Okay? We are not supposed to judge people according to what they eat. Okay? But, Here's another thing that comes up in Romans chapter 14, verses 5 on to verse 13. Okay? One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. One second, please, brethren. All right. All right, where were we? Verse 6. He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, 
and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. The context here in the judging is in relation to diet. Okay? Now hold up, hold up. Okay? But judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. Why? Because it is sanctified by prayer and by giving thanksgiving unto the Lord for it. Okay? You can eat whatever you want to eat today. Whatever it is, no matter how disgusting one another might think it is, you want to eat a whole slab of pork rib, back bacon, knock yourself out. You want to go vegan, knock yourself out, okay? You want to do it. You want to eat whatever you want to eat, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Knock yourself out. Have a good time. Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, go right ahead, okay? But the context is talking about dietary but let's continue okay but to him that is esteemeth anything to be unclean to him it is unclean okay right there verse 14 okay if you t okay if you think shellfish is unclean and you want to keep kosher go ahead fine it's not a requirement for salvation. It's not a requirement to stay saved. Okay? It's not a requirement for you to be right with God. Okay? God has allowed us that liberty. Okay? Okay? If you think pork is unclean, we can eat it. Okay? We can eat it. But if to you it's unclean, fine. Go ahead. That's great. Knock yourself out, buddy. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Do do what eat whatever you want to eat, okay? Go for it. Alright? Now verse 15. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Okay? And let's read verse 16. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. And let's throw in verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, when you go back to Romans chapter 14, verses 5 and 6. Remember the whole context of the chapter is in regard to diet. Okay? So what do these mean? One man, verse 5 and 6, One man esteemeth one day above another. Fasting days. Fasting days. Days when you were to afflict yourselves. Days of fasting and thanksgiving. Remember, thanksgiving is not equated with gluttony. Okay? It's giving thanks unto the Lord and whatnot. Okay? One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Okay? He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. Okay? So in context... Here, verses 5 and 6 are in relation with fasting and also giving thanks unto the Lord. Okay? So, one person might be like, I'm, I'm going to do my, uh, I'm going to like, I'm going to separate one total day, and you, you're supposed to do this every day, but I'm going to make Wednesday a day where from morning to so sundown, I'm going to concentrate everything onto the Lord, and I'm not going to eat anything because I want to spend my time in Scripture, singing praise, self-examining myself, whatever, and I'm going to do that on Wednesday, okay? Another guy would be like, but great for you. You know what, though? Uh, I'm going to, today, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and eat, but yet I'm going to give thanks unto the Lord. See, in context, in context, it has relation onto diets. Okay? 
How do you know that? Verse 6. Verse 6. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, and he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth God thanks. Brethren, you have to remember, the dietary restriction under the law was a very, very big, big thing. Okay? But see, then with the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and doing away with the dietary restrictions, why? Why? Because us Gentiles have been grafted into the tree of the Jew to make the Jew jealous. Okay? Okay? Hence, those, uh, those restrictions which were there for the Jews, we have been grafted in to the tree of the Jew, making of twain one new man. See? So the entire context of Romans chapter 14 is in relation on to diet. So when you got someone who says to you about, well, one man esteemeth one day above another. Yeah, but you have to keep in mind the entire context of Romans chapter 14. Okay? That is specifically there in regard to diet and fasting and feasting as in regard to giving thanks, worship, and praise unto the Lord. Okay? But now there's another one. There's another one and a little bit more deeper one that a lot of people go to. And this is the one to where people like to go to to justify uh, celebrating Christ Mass. Okay? We're not... We are not going to go off on that. Okay? Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 on to verse 23. Okay? Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 on to verse 23. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, or in regard, or in respect of an holy day. What is a holy day? Never mind. Never mind what Mr. Noah Webster says. I, I, I use this a, a Webster's 1828 dictionary. Yes, I do. I recommend it. It is a good tool for you to have for defining words. But remember... Brethren, remember, the authorized version has its own dictionary built into it, okay? What did they do before a dictionary came along, okay? And when you look in Webster's 1828 dictionary, look this up on your own time, with regards to the word recompense, the scripture gives us two spellings of the word recompense, one with a C, and one with an S, okay? In Mr. Webster's dictionary, he uses only the S and denotes that the one with the S can mean either a noun or a verb, okay? Where in Scripture, recompense with the C is a noun and recompense with an S is a verb, okay? What is it? Why am I telling you that? Uh, Mr. Webster's wonderful dictionary is not infallible. There are many occasions within uh, Webster's 1828 dictionary where he done botched it. Okay? So when it comes to Holy Day, you relying on Webster's 1828 dictionary? No, no, no. No, no, no. No. And besides, look really closely at the verse itself. Don't look at me. Look at the verse itself. Okay? It tells you right in the verse what these Holy Days are. Okay? Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, we can eat whatever we want, or in respect of an holy day, comma. What are these holy days? Here's the clue. Uh, or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. We're going to be expounding a little on verse 17 here in a little bit, but we're, let's, let's continue, okay? 
Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Uh, you know how it says in uh, 2 Corinthians, where, uh, and no marvel, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light and his ministers as ministers of righteousness. Don't some of these ministers of righteousness today, don't they just look like angels, huh? See what I'm saying? Let's continue. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head, from which all the body by joints and bands, having nourishment, ministered and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men. Certain days, like, okay, Tuesday, don't eat this. Tuesday, say this prayer, this prayer, this prayer, and say whatever, 50 Hail Marys, whatever, okay? Okay, the traditions of men, okay? <laughs> uh, which are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men, okay? Which have indeed a shoe of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Uh, there are some out there who, because their, their Roman Catholic Church tells them they ought to fast this day or to abstain from something, you know, Lent, okay? And it, it makes it so, so pious, so holy. But is it based on Scripture? No, it's based on what? The commandments of men. Man's traditions. Man's traditions. Interesting, huh? But now let's go back to verse 17. Okay? Verse 16 and 17. But we're going to be we're going to be concentrating on verse 17. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day. The holy days being mentioned here are the ones that you will find within the Old Testament scriptures. You know, like the seven feasts of the Lord, okay? The blowing of trumpets, the feast of tabernacles, in gathering, you know, Pesach, those kinds of things, okay? Those are the seven holy days. Seven of them, okay? Those are the holy days. How do you know that? Look at the verse, or the new moon, or the Sabbath day. But you might be saying, well, Brad, it says or. Holy day is its own thing. Be quiet. Or the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. The holy days, these are, yeah, or the new moon, or the Sabbath days, yes. Yes. But see, those are references onto Jewish holy days. The seven feasts of the Lord, that kind of thing, okay? Those holy days. Our Lord said three times in the year you were supposed to appear before me, okay? But within the Old Testament scriptures, those are the holy days, okay? The ones that are given in scripture, okay? Those are the holy days. How do you know? Verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. The seven feasts of the Lord, which off, right offhand, off, uh, uh, I can't name them all right offhand, but the seven feasts of the Lord, when you do studies on the seven feasts of the Lord and tie them in to the timeline of Scripture and whatnot, they line up perfectly. But see, a holy day, okay? I don't care what Mr. Webster said, thank you very little. What's say the Scripture? The holy days are the holy days mentioned in the Old Testament scriptures. Like I said, uh, Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, uh, Rosh Hashanah, okay, uh, Feast of Tabernacles, uh, um, the Feast of uh, Ingathering, Passover, 
those kinds of things, okay? Seven feasts, stuff like that, okay? Those are the holy days. The holy days are the Jewish holy days given to you within the Old Testament under the law, okay? Those are the holy days, dear friends. It's not Christ Mass, okay? It's not Christ Mass. Stop! Don't leave it. Leave it alone. I'm going to tell you. If you go off on that in the comment section, I cannot guarantee you how long your comment will be there. This is not the time or place for that, okay? I say that to you in love, all right? But, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body of Christ. But the body is of Christ. See, the holy days in the scriptures, in the Old Testament scriptures, under the law, okay? They were what? A shadow of things to come. Is our Christ Mass a shadow of things to come? You know? No. No. Christ Mass is a pagan Roman Catholic holiday. Holiday. Okay? What about the 4th of July? Is that a shadow of things to come? No. Okay? Go to Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. Verses 1 on to... Oh! You know what? How about we read the whole chapter? Oh! Oh yeah! It's only 13 verses. Can you handle it? Hebrews chapter 8. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. See, the Lord chose the holy days. Okay? In the scriptures. Not man. Not man. Okay? The Lord chose the holy days. Not man. Okay? Remember that. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shewed to thee in the mount. You know how you read in the book of Exodus how specific our Lord is unto Moses? Hey, this is how I want you to build the tabernacle and that kind of stuff. Um, God is very specific, specific on how he wants things done. God is specific. Yes. God is very specific. Okay. Remember that. Let's continue. Okay. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel 
After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind, and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Now, remember too, you got to remember about the book of Hebrews. Who was the book of Hebrews written unto? The Hebrews. Okay? For what dispensation? For the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble. See, that's why the book of Hebrews is written in the way it is written. To explain unto the Jew, the Hebrew, the Hebrew, what it truly means. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father's sacrifice that he did. Because remember, the Jews of today, a majority of them, are going to, obviously going to be going into the time of Jacob's trouble. Midway through it, they're going to get it. And here they're going to come to Hebrews and to James to have it explained to them by our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, personally, I mean, because, um, you know, the Church of the Living God is not going to be there. And also, do not forget the uh, two witnesses are going to give witness unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Okay? The Lord will give witness himself. But remember... People are not sealed except the 144,000 Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? You do not have eternal security. You take the mark of the beast, you're damned to hell, okay? So, let's continue. Verse 11. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. And for instruction and in righteousness, putting on the new man, you know, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Okay? Now Hebrews chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 14. Okay? Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first, wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shewbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant, and over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now, when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, uh, on Yom Kippur, okay? the Day of Atonement, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people, Yom Kippur, a day where you are to afflict your soul, okay? One of the holy days for the Jew, the Hebrew, okay? The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. See, the holy days, under the law, they were shadows of things to come that are present now and things that are also to come in the fulfillment when Israel, when the Hebrew, finally will receive their king. Okay? Let's continue. The Holy Ghost from verse 8. The Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drink and drinks, and divers washings, and carnal ordinances, carnal, carne, fleshly, 
imposed on them until the time of Reformation. And that's not a reference onto the Protestant Reformation, thank you. Uh, the Reformation, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Today's dispensation. Okay. But Christ, being come in high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Not of this building. No. You're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, a new, cre a new creature in Christ Jesus. Uh, the Lord lives in you. You know, you have that circumcision made without hands. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost living within you. Okay? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay? God does not dwell in temples made with hands. He dwells within us. Okay? Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once Catholic into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the puring of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, capital S, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Dead works. Why? Because they, we just, just read it. We just read it. Okay? <laughs> the Old Testament sacrifices. Okay? Because remember, under law it was faith and works. Don't believe these easy believism devils. They're lying to you, okay? They're lying to you, okay? It was faith and works during the law, okay? But see, those animal sacrifices could only cover, whereas the blood of Jesus Christ washes away. Do you get it? I know you do, okay? This is pretty simple. Let's continue. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, not Mary, not the Roman Catholic Church, okay? That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. We got to read verses uh, 16, 17, and 18, okay? We have to. When did the New Testament begin? See, a lot of people will say, oh, with the birth of Jesus. And that plays into you going to your satanic, your satanic pagan Christ mass. Okay? For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Um... Before the children of Israel went into the promised land, uh, Moses could see the promised land, but he died before they went in. Get it? For a testament is, force, uh, is of force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. So the New Testament actually begins with the death of the testator, our Lord Jesus Christ, not his birth. Okay? Okay? But again, the shadow of things to come. Okay? The Passover, the, the blood on the upper doorpost and on the sides there. Okay? The uh, Feast of Ingathering, everyone coming together. Uh, the first fruits. Okay? The day of the blowing of trumpets. Day of Atonement, okay? Feast of Tabernacles, shadows of things to come. Those are the holy days ordained in Scripture, okay? But now, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 10, okay? Right, right away. <laughs> For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very images and not the very image, excuse me, of those things.
can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect. Perfect, not meaning sinless, but it gets away, they washes away their sins. See, the Old Testament sacrifices could only cover because you had to keep redoing them. You, when you'd sin, you'd have to go to the priest. They'd have to cut it and spill the blood, okay? But see, the blood of Jesus Christ, who cleanseth away all our sin, okay? When you sin, you go and ask him for forgiveness. You don't have to kill an animal. Why? Because one sacrifice was made to cleanse away sin. The sacrifice of God himself. God shall provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Genesis 22, verse 8, okay? So only once. He did it once, and that was enough. See, Catholics with their satanic mass, with the when the with the little flesh cookie and the wine that they, you know, the avocadaver hocus pocus, uh, transubstantiation, okay? See, they're sacrificing their Christ, which is the son of perdition, how many how many times a day? If you're Catholic. You're serving Satan. You are not saved. You're a Christian, but you're not of the church of the living God. To hell with your mass and to hell with your Christ mass. Love you, church of the living God, brethren. Do you know where I stand on that? Shh. Make your part. Make your part. Okay? Let's continue. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Right. I mean, if the blood of bulls and goats, uh, they had to keep offering them. Why? Because they couldn't wash away sin. It covered them. Okay? Because that the worshipers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Yeah, it covered them. Didn't take them away. That's what the blood of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father did when he bled on the cross, died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, okay? Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. By the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which we will by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Okay? Once for all. You came into a body. Okay? It's not the flesh that saves you. Okay? <laughs> or it's not the flesh that takes away your sin. It's the blood. It's the blood. Okay? Therefore we have forgiveness through his blood, not his flesh. Okay? Okay? Now, are you with me so far about what these holy days were? They were the holy days given to you within the scriptures. Not man-made ones. Okay? Okay? That's very important to remember. How does this, how does this uh, correlate onto birthdays? Well, birthdays. Pagans did birthdays. Now, I will tell you, uh, my wife's birthday, I wish her a happy birthday. I give her a card. Okay? Yes. We don't celebrate like have a big, big shindig or whatever. Uh, you come to my uh, our little uh, glorified motel room here, uh, and on the wall in the living room or in the kitchen area, you'll see cards. You know, uh, birthday wishes, that kind of stuff like that. Okay. 
All right. Um, like I said, me and my wife, I, I get her card. I'll, I'll, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad the Lord brought you uh, on this earth and gave you to me and me to you. Okay. Personally, if you want to wish someone a happy birthday, fine, go ahead. Are you going to go to hell if you wish someone a happy birthday, give them a card or something? No. Are you in sin? I trow not. I trow not. But see, there is something we have to remember. When people want to make something that is of men a holy day, then you run into problems. Say how. Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 6. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. The warning is against idolatry, about, you know, graven images and stuff like that. But you have to remember too, brethren, idolatry is not just graven images. Psalm 15, Psalm 115, Psalm 115. And see, if you want to wish someone a happy birthday, okay, give them a card, sing to them happy birthday, okay? Um, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. But see, to compare that onto your little satanic Christ mass. Number one, you know when you were born. Uh, number two, we do not know when Jesus Christ was born. Okay, the exact date. Okay, there that argument is blown right out of the water. Okay, and we are to celebrate the fact that he died for our sins according to the scriptures. The scriptures tell us opposite of the satanic, pagan, Roman Catholic holiday, our Christ Mass. Okay? <laughs> okay? Yes. The scriptures talk opposite. You are to be thankful of anything that he died for your sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. It is the death of the testator, okay? You see that without in the Pauline epistles, the New Testament, okay? It's the death, not the birth, okay? Okay? So can, to compare wishing your wife or your husband a happy birthday and giving them a birthday card, to compare that to Christ's mask, uh, no. No. No, 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 no. No. Psalm 115. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where now is their God? But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. 
They that make them are like unto them, so is every one that trusteth in them. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord, he is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord, he is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord, he is their help and their shield. The Lord hath been mindful of us, he will bless us, he will bless the house of Israel, he will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Ye are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. A stern warning about worshiping of idols. Dead images. But see there again, remember, the worshiping of idols. An idol is something that you put above God, right? Anything. Could that be a birthday? <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 24. Ezekiel chapter 24. How many of you have known some people when it comes to birthdays for their children? They get really weird about it. I mean, really weird. Uh, listen, I, I know this is probably going to offend some of you, but, um, you know, you can make an idol out of a birthday. You really can. You really can. Because people equate showing love by what? Getting gifts. Okay? And plus, for a child that is flattered on their birthday, they grow up. What happens? What happens? Ezekiel chapter 24, verses 16 on to verse 27. Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes with a stroke. Yet neither shalt thou mourn nor weep, neither shall thy tears run down. Forbear to cry, make no mourning for the dead. Bind the tire, bind the tire of thine head upon thee, and put on thy shoes upon thy feet, and cover not thy lips, and eat not the bread of men. So I spake unto the people in the morning, and that even my wife died. And I did in the morning as I was commanded. And the people said unto me, Wilt thou not tell us what these things are to us, that thou doest so? Then I answered them. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Speak unto the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary, the excellency of your strength, the desire of your eyes, and that which your soul pitieth, and your sons and your daughters, whom ye have left, shall fall by the sword. Mm. And ye shall do as I have done. Ye shall not cover your lips, nor eat the bread of men. And your tires shall be upon your heads, and your shoes upon your feet. Ye shall not mourn nor weep, but ye shall pine away for your iniquities, and mourn one toward another. Thus Ezekiel is unto you a sign. According to all that he hath done, shall ye do. And when this cometh, ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Also, thou son of man, shall it not be in the day when I take from them their strength. Look at this. The joy of their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that whereupon they set their minds, their sons and their daughters, that he that escapeth in that day shall come unto thee to cause thee to hear it with thine ears. In that day shall thy mouth be opened to him which is escaped, and thou shalt speak, and be no more dumb. And thou shalt be a sign unto them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Look at verse 25. 
Also thou son of man, shall it not be in the day when I take from them their strength, the joy of their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that whereupon they set their minds, their sons and their daughters? Have you seen people today who make idols of their children? You, for example, now, I, I don't know what it's like to have children, okay? But I have a pretty good idea what the scripture says about this, okay? You know, as a judgment against the children of Israel in the siege, our Lord God said that his own people would go cannibal and eat their own children? Why? Why? Is it because that they made idols of their children? Look at some of these uh, birthday parties where they lavish all these things on the, their children. Um, that kind of stuff, what can it create in a, a child? What can it create? I've seen it. You've seen it. Okay? People can make idols of their children. Look at the people who go to their children's baseball games and these parents who get violent sometimes. Because why? They want to live vicariously through their children. And they value their children above God. So with some of these birthday parties, especially when it comes to children? Yeah. There can be some idolatry that happens there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, go to Luke chapter 14 now. Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Verses 25 on to verse 33. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now he's not telling you to hate your children. God forbid. No. No putting them above the Lord. Okay? Remember, idolatry is anything that you put above the Lord. That could be your father, your mother, your wife, your children, your brethren, sisters, and even your own life. That's what he's talking about. And with some of the way these people get with their children... With their birthday parties, their soccer games, their baseball games, and basketball, whatever. I I've seen it. I've seen it. You've seen it. Some of these parents can make little I idols out of their children. That's crossing the line. Let's continue. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest haply, after he hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build, and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage, and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Okay? And, let's keep this in mind. Go to Micah chapter 5. Micah chapter 5. Micah chapter 5, verses 8 under verse 15. Micah chapter 5, verses 8 under verse 15. 
Uh, you notice a lot of what we've been looking at has been in relation to the Old Testament. Pretty much. Except for what we looked at in Romans and Colossians. Okay? Uh, Hebrews is in the uh, New Testament, yes. But that is for the Jews, the Hebrews, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Micah chapter 5, verses 8 to verse 15. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people, as a lion among beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he go through, both treadeth down and teareth in pieces, and none can deliver. Thine hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots, and I will cut off the cities of thy land, and throw, the, and throw down all thy strongholds. And I will cut off witchcrafts out of thy hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Thy graven images also will I cut off, and thy standing images out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt no more worship the work of thine hands. And I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee, so will I destroy thy cities. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. So, when it is in correlation to birthday, If you want to wish your best friend, a brother, a sister, happy birthday, you want to get them a card, fine. But see, when you cross the line to idolatry, like, well, oh, I'm, I'm so horrible, I haven't get, gotten them a gift, or you instill in children while well, equating their birthday with covetousness. Pride, selfishness. My wife, on her birthday, I am thankful that number one, the Lord gave my wife life. And the greatest gift my Lord has ever given unto me is that he has forgiven my sins because I have come to him broken, contrite, and in fear I called upon his name and he forgave me and made me a new creature. The greatest gift he has ever given is himself, his salvation. After that, my wife. So on her birthday, I was like, Lord, thank you. Thank you for giving me my wife. And I thank you, Lord, that she's out there in the living room right now. On your own birthday, it's like, Lord, you let me live. You, you, you put me here for a reason. To learn of you. To learn of you. To love you and to serve you. Because if you didn't want me to live, I wouldn't. So, if, like I said, if you want to wish, we, we, my wife and I, we get each other cards, okay? You know, if, if you, you know, want to give them something uh, to show some uh, affection, okay? Is it a sin to wish someone a happy birthday? No. Is it sin when you make a birthday a grand spectacle and there is involved covetousness, selfishness, and pride? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's what you need to be aware of. And especially about the gifts. Especially about the gifts. See, because... What happens? I've seen it before and so have you. When a child doesn't get a certain amount of gifts on a birthday, 
what happens? It's, well, it's all about me. It's all about me, right? Idolatry, covetousness. It can lead to that. Some will say, eh, just better leave it off alone. And you know what to that? I can't disagree. Uh, our best friend, when I, I discussed him with the, uh, discussed this with him, it's like, well, it's nowhere for us uh, in the Pauline epistles about celebrating a birthday. And that's true. That's true. And his, uh, his point of view is like, I just, you know, it's another day. You know, and you're right. Can't argue that. And plus, it is not in the Pauline epistles. It is not. It is not. But, um, like I said, if you want to wish someone, you know, happy birthday. Happy birthday. I'm glad that the Lord gave you life and that he has made our paths to cross. I don't see that. I don't see that in and of itself as sin. It's when you start making an idol out of it. Where covetousness and pride is involved. Then that's dangerous. Then that's dangerous. Okay? That's how I would answer that. But about giving of gifts. Giving of gifts. Go to Deuteronomy. Now we're shifting. Now we're shifting into the other part of this. Deuteronomy chapter 16. Verses 18 on to verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 18 on to verse 22. Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. Thou shalt not rest judgment, thou shalt not respect persons, neither take a gift. For a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. Talking about bribing people. Judges. Bribing judges. Which happens a lot here in America. Okay? Talking about bribery. That which is altogether just shalt thou follow that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Neither shalt thou set thee up any image which the Lord thy God hateth. Interesting here where it talks about giving of gifts to blind the eyes. Okay, bribery. And then he, he, uh, our Lord equates it with also walks into idolatry. And that's some. Psalm 68. Psalm 68. Psalm 68. Verses 15 on to verse 20. The hill of God is as the hill of Bashan, and high hill as the hill of Bashan. Why leap ye, ye high hills? This is the hill which God desireth to dwell in. Yea, the Lord will dwell in it forever. The chariots of God are twenty thousand, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai in the holy place. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. Yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Shilah. He that is our God is the God of salvation. And unto God the Lord belong the issues of death. Give gifts. Gifts. 
Who's the ultimate gift giver? Now remember how we looked at Pharaoh and Herod on their birthday. They gave gifts, right? Right? Uh, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he shed his blood on the cross to atone for your sins. He's a king. Okay? He came into the world. Okay? God shall provide himself a lamb, a burnt offering for sin. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 8 under verse 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. For by God's grace, through faith. See, this is why easy believism is so heretical. Because easy believism people, they save themselves by their own belief. Well, salvation is a gift given to you. Not something that you do yourself because you save yourself by your belief. Or you simply receive it. Okay? Um, God's the one who does the receiving. Look, I know you don't, a lot of you don't like to hear this, but God has requirements for him saving you. Contrition, sorrow, and fear of the Lord. Those three things that culminate in one event. Okay? And he is the one who saves you. Not you by your own belief. It is the gift of God. Okay? Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 16. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. But aren't you sealed with the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit? Oh, so that must mean that Jesus Christ is God the Father. Bingo! Let's continue. But unto every one of us is grace, is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Jesus Christ is the greatest gift of all. And not in the fact that he was born, but that he died and shed his blood and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And it is nothing short of blasphemy for one of you to say, I just believe. You mock God's grace. You spit on God's grace. You take God's grace out of the equation because you save yourself by your own belief. 
Wherefore he saith, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Check your margin in your scriptures. Does it have a reference for Psalm 68? Now that he ascended, what is it? What is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some and teachers, excuse me, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. See, the gifts that God gives on to us, his body, the church of the living God, are not for us to be hoarded, but to be given away. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. And every single one of us is in the ministry of reconciliation. But not every one of us are apostles, and there are no apostles today. But uh, our prophets and evangelists and uh, pastors and teachers, okay? He has put us in the body where he wants us to for his purpose, see? But he has given us all gifts. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. My best friend analytical a dearly dearly beloved sister you want something you want to find something she'll find it for you and also sweetness of words my dearly beloved brother and friend from Australia a man whose prayers God answers and also an evangelist and so on and so forth, so on. See, he, our Lord has given us all gifts for the perfecting of the body of Christ. Perfecting, meaning perfecting our faith, that we have perfect faith on the Lord. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 13, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slay of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body Fifthly joined together and compact, compacted by that which every joint supplieth. Every single one of you of the church of the living God, of the body of Christ, you serve a purpose. Whatever it is he wants you to do. You're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Brother, sister, you do have a purpose. Whatever it is he wants you to do. Okay? Why? For the, why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That we supply one another, take care of one another, encourage, edify, rebuke, exhort, correct. Yes. We all have gifts, but those gifts that our Lord has given us is to be shared one with another. According to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Okay? Romans chapter 5. We're going to be in Romans for a little bit. Hope you don't mind. That's a trick question. Romans chapter 5. 
Now, if somebody on your birthday wants to give you a gift out of love, not because it's like, well, here, I'm giving you something, therefore you ought to... No, no, no. If you give to somebody, are you giving in hope that you get it back? If you are, that means you're giving away something in the pretense to receive something in return. That's wicked. That's wicked. Or if you give something in order to hold leverage over someone and to rub it into their face, that's also wicked. If I love you, I love you as a church of the living God, and it's like, uh, uh, hey, 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 brother Jeff, I love you. Uh, here's a here's a here's a genuine leather uh, edition of the scriptures for you. Here, why are you? I love you. I just want to give it to you. You give and expect nothing back. How could we give back to our Lord Jesus Christ what He has already given unto us as His body, the Church of the Living God? What is our reasonable service? Huh? Don't worry. We're, we're going to be in Romans chapter 12. We'll, we'll cover that. But Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Verses 15 on to verse 18. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Yes, he freely gives it to you. Yes, he gives it to you. It's not that you just accept it. He gives it to you freely. But the condition is, which is in Romans chapter 3, okay, the condition to receiving the gift of God's salvation by his grace through faith comes through what? Brokenness, contrition, and godly fear. The fear of the Lord. Okay, let's continue. For if through the offense of one many be dead, Adam sin, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, not the gift by your belief, but the gift by grace. See, you stinking, wicked, devil, easy believism heretics, you make cheap God's grace. You take him out of the equation by saving yourself by your own belief. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. Okay? Look at that verse. And the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses onto justification. How many times have you sinned since the Lord has saved you? <laughs> More than you wish to acknowledge, right? Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel when you knowingly have sinned? You can't, you take a hundred showers or a hundred baths. That won't get that feeling of filth off of you, will it? Until you come to the Lord in, in repentance and ask him, Lord, I've sinned, please forgive me. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, talking about Adam's sin in the Garden of Eden, much more than, much more, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Let's read that again. For if by one man's offense, Death reigned by one, 
much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Yes, the free gift of God's grace through faith, his salvation is there for all men. But see, you don't receive that gift by you just believing. No. No. See, the Romans road <laughs> is about brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord. Okay? God's condition on Him saving you is brokenness of your self-righteousness. Godly sorrow. It's your fault. And you are guilty. You can't do anything to save yourself. And the fear of the Lord that you're going to go to hell unless he have grace and save you. And if he does save you, he makes you a new creature. Why? Because he lives within you. God lives within you. That circumcision made without hands and you are sealed until the day of redemption. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. And you get that gift by just believing? By what you do? You see why I get so angry at these easy believism devils? You easy believism devils are cheapening the grace of God. Okay? Sounds like gunshots, don't it? Okay, Romans chapter 6, verses 17 on to verse 23. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness, separation. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. Wages, something that you've earned. Because if you're sin, you deserve to die and go to hell. Guess what? That includes me too. But... But, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And how do you get that gift? Through brokenness, contrition, and the fear of the Lord. Okay? Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Verses 6 on to verse 13. Verse 14 is about those who are sent to preach, you devils. Okay? Romans 10, verses 6 on to verse 13. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. What, you easy believe as some heretics? What, you bring Christ down just because you believe, right? The devils also believe, and they tremble. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, 
and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Believeth on him, not merely in him. The devils believe and tremble. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all them, all that call upon him. Beg your pardon. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Sorry about that, brethren. I had to go see. It sounded like gunshots, but a couple kids playing up, uh, up above us. But anyway... The free gift by grace through faith. Okay? Because God so loved past tense that he gave past tense. Okay? Okay? A gift, if someone, like I said, if someone on your birthday, a family member, wants to give you a gift out of love, okay? It's like, you know, hey, I love you. Here, just, just take it. There's nothing wrong with receiving a gift out of love. But in the pretense of to only be, you know, I gave you this, now you got to give it back to me kind of gift, or to hold leverage on you, eh, okay? The free gift of salvation by grace through faith and the gifts that our Lord has given us, we can never repay Him. Never. Never. Romans chapter 11, verses 25 on to verse 36. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Verse 28. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching election, meaning they are the apple of God's eye, the Jew, the Hebrew, is God's chosen people. But we, the church of the living God, comprised of both Jew and Gentile. The Gentile have been grafted in to that scene. Okay? As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Uh, the Jew is God's chosen people. God chose the way of the cross. God chose Come to the, the way for you to come to the cross, broken of self-righteousness, godly sorrow, and the fear of the Lord, and calling upon His name in the fear of the Lord. Okay? Okay? And once the Lord saves you, you cannot become unsaved. Okay? The gifts and calling, the calling the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. And you look at how our Lord, what He has done unto His own people. 
because of their disobedience and rejection and refusal of him. But still, they are the apple of his eye. Okay? For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. By living according to the scriptures so that the Jew can see what their God has done in us Goyim, the Gentile, to make them jealous. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and his ways past finding out! For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? Get a load of that. How are you going to repay God? We'll look at that in a second. For of him and through him and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever. Amen. Romans 12 verses 1 on verse 9. How, what is, what is, what can we do? For our God, Church of the Living God, what can we do for Him who has given us all things? Who spared not His own Son? You know, the flesh, the body. Who, who spared nothing for us that He might bring us unto Himself. Graft us, the Gentile, into the tree of the Jew. Romans 12, verses 1 and verse 9. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, separate, separate, other, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, it's your reasonable service, what? To not be conformed to this world. Okay? To live holy, separate, other than that. What does the Lord require of you but to love mercy, judgment, and to walk humbly before your God? Okay? For I say, through the grace given unto me, the grace given. You are given grace. It's not like something like a pinata. You hit it and then you just run and grab it. No, it's given to us. Not us taking it. Okay? Because if you're taking it, then, <laughs> then who's doing it? Him or you? He doesn't force salvation on you. Obviously. But see, you come to him broken, contrite, and in the fear of the Lord, call upon his name, and may he save you. He gives you himself. He saves you. You don't save yourself. Okay? For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, notice gift and grace, okay? Whether prophesy, prophecy, 
let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Abhor is extreme hatred. Okay? Cleave to that which is good. Cleave to that which is good. Okay? I was going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, but go to James now. Go to James. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Not Hebrews. James chapter 1. Verses 5 on to verse 17. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Unstable. Hold your place here. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Verses 1 and verse 6. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, number one, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Seek him according to his Precepts. Not by your feelings, but you seek him through the scriptures. Okay? Verse 7 in James chapter 1. Okay? For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Unstable. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Here today, gone tomorrow. Doing one thing, next day doing something else. Has something there, takes it away. There, away, there, away, there, away. Unstable. Okay? Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own, own lust and enticed. Then must, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. And we already looked at that. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Let's say it's your birthday, and you're, you're of the Church of the Living God, and uh, your mother comes to you, who, who um, it's like, happy birthday, son, daughter. You're like, thanks, thanks. Look. I know you need something. I know you need this, whatever it is. 
so I'm giving it to you. Or they just give you a gift because they love you and expect nothing in return. There's nothing wrong with receiving gifts like that. There is nothing wrong with that. Okay? If they do it on the pretense of just for your birthday, like they wouldn't have given you anything else other than just on your birthday, eh, eh. or they, it's like I gave this to you special for your birthday. You'll have to pray about that. But see, when a gift is given out of love, expecting nothing in return, when you give to someone, do you seriously expect a payback? What if you give to someone who can't pay you back? For, for example, I could, you know, I could never repay any of you tangible, tangibly for those of you who have, who have helped us. I can never do that. Why? Because the Lord keeps us <laughs> where we depend on Him for everything. I can never pay you back. See, but fruit, spiritual fruit, is the reward that you get by giving unto others. Okay? So to give out of the motive of a pure heart and to accept that, even on the premise of a birthday, it's not a wrong thing. It's not a wrong thing. See, that's why we looked at these. To look at a, a scriptural example of what it means to give with the pure heart. And is not our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father the purest of the pure? Hmm? He loved and gave past tense what happens when someone has an ulterior motive Proverbs we're going to be in the book of Proverbs go to Proverbs Proverbs beginning at chapter 6 Proverbs chapter 6 Verses 30 on to verse 35. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. Don't mind stealing bread from the mouth of decadence or something. When you are poor but there again, if you're found, you pay a heavy price. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. Look at this. He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. Giving many gifts as a means to pacify something evil that you have done. Rather than giving a gift out of pure love. There's a difference there. See? Proverbs chapter 15. Verses 24 under verse 30. The way of life is above to the wise. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Wisdom, being wise, is equated with the fear of the Lord. Okay? The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. From beneath. Uh, the way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the border of the widow. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house. 
but he that hateth gifts shall live. Remember how we looked in Deuteronomy about bribery or gifts given to you to like sway your persuasion or someone gives you a gift to later uh, get something from you? Given uh, backhandedly or, handedly or deceitfully or to just hold leverage over you? That's a tactic of manipulating. I gave you this a while ago. Remember? Remember? I've given you thousands. Therefore you owe me. Mm. Are you giving out love? Or something to uh, boast yourself about? See? That's why, but he that hateth gifts shall live. Being greedy, taking it all. Okay? Hmm. You greedy of gain? What does that say? You trouble your own house. The Lord keeps us. <laughs> okay? Our Lord gives us for our bills, for the rent. And things that are over, He shows us. It's like, you know that little I gave you? Get those supplements for your wife. Hey, you know that thorn in the flesh you were always asking for humility? Okay, remember that? Okay, and you were eating that poison? Okay, uh, here are some supplements. This is what I want you to get. Okay? The Lord personally keeps us where we are dependent on Him. Through you, the church of the living God. Okay. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. The, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. Now, Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17, verses 8 on to verse 23. A gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it. Whithersoever it turneth, it prospereth. The pearl of great price. The gift of God which is his salvation. A gift is as a precious stone, a tried cornerstone. No other foundation can any man lay but that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. A gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it. Whithersoever it turneth, it prospereth. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. You know, we as a church of the living God, we got to forgive and forget. For those of us of the church of the living God, even though we might not like each other, <laughs> we got to, it's like, okay, what happened, happened, we're done. Stay over there. Love you. See you at the judgment seat. You know. A reproof entereth more into a wise man, one who fears the Lord, than a hundred stripes into a fool. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. Therefore a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Oh, a cruel messenger. Someone who seeks rebellion, um, Someone who seeks rebellion wants nothing to do with the Lord. Who's that cruel messenger? Satan. Among many. Okay? Let a bear robbed of her whelps meet a man rather than a fool in his folly. Whoso rewardeth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. 
The beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water. Therefore leave off contention before it be meddled with. He that justifieth the wicked, and he that condemneth the just, even they both are abomination to the Lord. Wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom, seeing he hath no heart to it? And the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. See, a fool who says in his heart there is no God, there ain't no price that you can pay to get wisdom because in your heart you say there is no God. The gift of God cannot be purchased with money, with anything that you have. It's his gift, see. And see, by you guys thinking you can get it just by believing without being broken or contrite or calling upon the name of the Lord, which you all hate, you easy believers of devils, you, you stinking devils. <laughs> okay? Uh. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. A man void of understanding striketh hands, and becometh surety in the presence of his friend. He loveth transgression that loveth strife, and he that exalteth his gate seeketh destruction. He that hath a froward heart findeth no good, and he that hath a perverse tongue falleth into mischief. He that begetteth a fool doeth it to his sorrow, and the father of a fool hath no joy. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. A wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. A wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. Whereas we began in verse 8, a gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it, whithersoever it turneth it prospereth. The gift of God is himself, salvation. A wicked man taketh, uh, taketh a gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. All this shall be thine, if thou fall, if therefore thou fall down and worship me, Satan. Okay? See the contrasts? Do you see those contrasts in verses 8 and verse 23? You see that? You see that? Proverbs chapter 19, verses 1 on to verse 6. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. The foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. See, the foolishness. Foolishness is what? Going, uh, behaving, living as if there is no God. Okay? The foolishness of man perverteth his way living like there is no God. And his heart fretteth against the Lord because he says in his heart there is no God. You want to accept a gift from someone like that? Wealth maketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Many will entreat the favor of the prince, and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. Many will entreat the favor of the prince. Who is our prince? And every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. Remember how our Lord Jesus Christ, when he fed those people, and they followed him, and he said to them, You follow me because you only, uh, because you only ate the bread. You, not because you saw the miracles. See? They followed Jesus because he fed them. Not because he was their king. Their God. Okay? 
they sought the prince because they merely saw the loaves, not the miracle. They saw the gift not the one who was giving them the gift. Do you see? Do you see? Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Verses 1 on to verse 9. After two days was the feast of Passover and of unleavened bread. And the chief priests and the scribes saw how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany, in the house of Shimon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she brake the box and poured it on his head. And there were some of them, and there were some, excuse me, and there were some that had indignation within themselves, and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than three hundred pence, and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. Hold your place there. Go to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Boy, didn't that sound righteous? Well, th this waste, I mean, that could have been sold and given to the poor. Boy, who, who, whoever was saying stuff like that sounded real pious and righteous, right? John chapter 12, verses 4 and verse 6. Same telling. Check this out. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Shimon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Check this out. Sounded real pious and righteous, right? Because he cared for the poor, right? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. Aha! Go back to cha uh, Mark chapter 14. Aha. Aha. See, I give you this gift. You know, with your big smile, right? You love people. Oh, I give you this gift. But they're secretly. They give you it out of a pretense. Out of a pretense. Now you owe me. Now I have leverage over you. I've given you this. See? See how nice I am? But see, you owe me. I'm going to exact this on you. In context with birthdays. I give this to you. And now, now you're going to give it back to me. Or it's your birthday. That means I have to give it to you. Uh, you know when, when people. When you run into something like that. Well it's your birthday. i got to give you something. It's like no you don't. <laughs> Please I, I don't accept it. <laughs> See if someone wants to give you something. Uh, on a birthday no matter I mean hey if like I said birthdays actually like you know that's true we're not it's not in the Pauline epistles for us today okay when you look at birthdays kings who were pagans and they gave on to others okay yes that's true um, like I said personally I, I wish my wife a happy birthday I get her a card I'm even going to wish my best friend a happy birthday. We're going to send him a card. <laughs> okay? Unless he says, no, don't do that. It's like, okay. Okay. But see, those things, while simple, can be turned into idolatry. And when it comes to giving gifts, if it's done out of love without expecting anything, fine. If it's done in a pretense of, I, owe, uh, I give, now you owe me, or I have leverage over you, or because it's this certain thing, making them making it an idol, then it's like, well, it, yeah, it's your birthday. I gotta give you something. No, you don't. See, that's idolatry. That's idolatry. 
Let's continue in uh, Mark chapter 14, verses 6 on to 9 now, okay? And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. Look at this. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me ye have not always. Whosoever loveth anything more than Jesus is not worthy of him? She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint me my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, where, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken for, spoken of for a memorial of her. And <laughs> we're looking at it right now, are we not? Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23. Verses 6 on to verse 8. kind of what we just looked at. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he eateth, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten, shalt thou vomit up and lose thy speed, lose thy sweet words. See, when our Lord gives us Himself, when we come to Him broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, we call upon His name and He save us and seal us and give us that circumcision made without hands Himself and make us a new creature. We love Him because He first loved us. Hence, because of everything He has given us, we want to serve Him. We want to be separate. Okay? Okay? We, we owe our Lord everything. And we can never pay Him back. The reasonable service is not to be conformed to that. You're reasonable. Reasonable. He's given you everything. What does He ask of you? To walk humbly. To walk according to the Scriptures. To refrain from evil. To, uh, to uh, not put wicked things before your eyes. To abstain from every, from every appearance of evil. To be separate, holy. That's our reasonable service. Is that too much to ask? But see, you got these people who save themselves by their belief. And they just take. They take. No separation, no holiness, meaning being other than that. No being renewed in their mind. No adhering their lives according to the scriptures. None of that. No. Because it's all about them. It's all about them. The Proverbs, chapter 29. And one more verse in Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 9. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of, of thy words. They give you gifts so that they can hold it against you. You owe them. Those are not the type of people that you want to know, brethren. And those are the type of people that we want nothing to do with. And had I had known about some, I didn't know.
Proverbs chapter 29, verses 1 on verse 6. He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father. But he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. The king by judgment establisheth the land. But he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. And look at verse 3. Whoso loveth wisdom, the fear of the Lord, rejoiceth his father. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Fear of the Lord, you rejoice. If you fear the Lord, you rejoice our Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ. But he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. Who is the mother of harlots? Roman Catholicism. Who is her army, the Jesuit order? Who is the head of Roman Catholicism? That be Satan. But he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. See, the gift of God is himself. Salvation. But see, you receive gifts from the whore. <laughs> it's not this land overthrown. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. In the transgression of an evil man there is a snare, but the righteous doth sing and rejoice. We can rejoice and we sing because the Lord, by grace, through faith, has saved us. Do you see? Like I said, when it comes to birthdays, every mention of the word birthday is in the Old Testament, doctrinally, in two different dispensations. Pharaoh and Herod, okay? We are not commanded anywhere in the Pauline epistles, anywhere in the New Testament, about birthdays, okay? Birthdays are not a holy day. The holy days mentioned in Scripture are those of the law, like the, you know, the seven feasts and the holy days that are in Scripture. Okay? Those are the holy days. Okay? Not man-made ones. Okay? Okay? If you, as the Church of the Living God, want to wish a brother or a sister happy birthday. Send them a card. Give them a gift because you love them. You Like we looked at, you, uh, our Lord said, uh, the poor is always with you. Uh, you can do good to them anytime you want to. Okay? Um, giving a gift on birthdays just because it is their birthday? Uh, uh, uh. You know, if you're going to give a gift unto your brother or as your sister, do it whenever. Not just because it is their birthday. But, you know, wishing someone a happy birthday? You know, I'm glad, I'm glad the Lord gave you life. I'm glad that the Lord was able to bring us together so we could speak, have fellowship, be friends, or be brethren, or sisters, whatever. You know, you want to give them a card? You know, great. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, when you start making an idol out of it, and then the gift thing, it's like, well, I've given this to you. It can be a very slippery slope. Very, and, with, and with children, come on, we've all seen some of these kids' birthday parties, how elaborate they are, and how kids um, can get at birthday pres uh, birthday times or stuff, something like that. It's like, well, last year I got so-and-so presents. They can lead into idolatry and covetousness. They can. Okay? They can. 
Is it a sin if you want to wish your brother or sister of the Church of the Living God a happy birthday? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Is it a sin for you to give them a card, sing to them, or to even give them a gift? No. If you do it in the pretense of what you're getting back, then you have problems. If you make an idol something that you put above the Lord, and there's covetousness, idolatry, and pride involved, Like I said, I wish my wife a happy birthday on her birthday. I give her a card. She does the same for me. And like I said, any of you of the Church of the Living God who we uh, know and talk with, if you know if you're uncomfortable with like you know Brad, love you on my birthday. Hey, don't 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 do that. Don't don't give me a don't sing don't. So hey, okay, whatever, man. Fine, it's fine. I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. But that is how I would answer the question of birthdays. Ultimately, and here it is in a nutshell, it's between you and the Lord. It is between you and the Lord. It really is. It truly is. And that's how I would answer that question. Hopefully this has uh, helped some of you. Hopefully. And also too, you have to be really careful about how you receive gifts. Like I said, there are those of the Church of the Living God that our Lord through each and every one of you who help us our Lord sustains us through you and your reward is spiritual fruit you know that you know that you know Paul says not that I desire a gift but that you may have fruit abounding to your account spiritual fruit okay but you know very very quickly on that Go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Okay? You know, if someone, praise the Lord, helps us, it's a gift. They give us a gift. Okay? It's a gift. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 under verse 15. Am not I an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. For the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Mine answer to them that do examine me is this. Have we not power to eat and to drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife? as well as other apostles and as the brethren of the Lord and Kephas, Peter, who was married, or I only a Barnabas, have we not power to forbear working? Whoso, who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not the milk of the flock. Say I these say I these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth, thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? Or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt. This is written that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and he that thresheth in hope, and he and that he, excuse me, that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, 
Is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things pertaining to the flesh, things for your needs? Okay? If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Paul is saying, look, we have the power to forbear working secularly, but to live of the gospel that God will provide for you if he has called you to this position to provide for you through the church and living God. And there are a lot of people who like to dispute that. Deal with the scriptures. Okay? Nevertheless, we have nevertheless we have not used this power but suffer all things lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of, of, not off, of the gospel. But I have used none of these things. Paul chose that. He chose to work with his own hands. He had the power to just go about and preach and have his needs met by the church and the living God. He had the power to do that. Why didn't he? But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory void. Let's read verse 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. He did it to set an example. Remember, he had only himself, okay? He didn't have a wife. He didn't have kids, stuff like that, okay? He chose to do that, but he had the power to do that, the power to forbear working and just, you know, preach the, preach the word. He says even here in verse 14, even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Okay? And remember, that's in Philippians. Go to Philipp Philippians. Okay? Go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Verses 15 on to verse 20. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning gift, giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epipheritus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. See, there again, that's touching on the motive of giving. Okay? You give to someone because you give to them. Either because they need something or you want to, it's like, hey, here, take this. I love you. Don't, don't insult me by saying, I'll, I'll, I owe you. No, you don't. No, you don't. Here, take it. People will be like, well, it's your birthday. I had to give you something. No, you don't. don't I don't want it. <laughs> okay? What is the motive? 
why is someone giving to you? Is it because of necessity that they have to? Or out of love, expecting nothing in return? Is a birthday an idol on to you? Or is it something, happy birthday, baby. Happy birthday, my husband or my wife. Does a birthday make your children into little monsters? I've seen it and so have you. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Got more videos coming. More, more videos are coming. Um, I just wanted to make this little video because um, I said a uh, brother had asked me of this. And um, like I said, I wanted to get this done before the end of the week. And the week has not ended yet. <laughs> but, uh, so anyway, uh, like I said, I hope this, uh, answers, hope this answers your question, brother. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Thank you for your question. We love you, brethren, sisters, and church of the living God. Those of you who are truly our brothers and sisters, thank you. Thank you. We love you. And we will see you in the next video.